Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I remember hearing all kinds of stories. People like to talk about drunk driving and what happens when you're drunk driving and so on. And I've heard so many stories, uh, these legends and myths. People tell me, they say, oh yeah, I knew a guy once. Uh, and he was leaning against his car and he fell asleep because he was drunk and a cop came by and gave him a ticket said, well, you were touching your car while drunk, therefore you're drunk driving. I've also heard people say that they were sleeping one off in their car in a parking lot and they got a ticket for drunk driving. And I never hear these from the people who got the tickets. It's always a friend of a friend. And I've also heard someone say, well, if you want to not get the ticket in that situation, you put your keys in the glove box and then you can sleep in your car, even if you're drunk, because the keys are in the glove box. Somehow there's some kind of key in the glove box rule. So Dave, Ed, and Lawrence all sent me a note and said, Steve, check this out. The Ohio Supreme Court just ruled that motorists don't violate the uh, operating while visibly impaired suspension rules unless the vehicle is moving. And this is one of these cases. Someone sleeping in a car while drunk, but the car's not moving. Is that a violation of the law? And here it is particularly important because the person had a record. And so this would not have been their first offense. It would have been violating the rules based on that. So this story is from Cleveland.com. Jeremy Pelzer wrote it. Ohioans cannot be found guilty of driving with a license suspended for operating a vehicle under the influence of drugs or alcohol so long as they don't move the vehicle. A divided Ohio Supreme Court ruled on Wednesday. A 4-3 to three ruling involves a case in which a woman from Hamilton County, previously convicted of an OVI, was thrown out of a friend's house and found hours later by police sleeping in the driver's seat of the car. The car was parked and the engine was running. There was no evidence that the car ever moved while she was behind the wheel. The police came upon the car. It was parked. She was asleep. And these facts, by the way, are presumed to be true. Do not argue with these facts because that's what the Supreme Court of Ohio says were the facts they were basing this on. So she's sleeping in the seat. Engine is running. Car's not moving. The woman was sentenced to three days in jail in order to pay a fine for driving while under an OVI suspension. So they'd suspended her for operating while visibly impaired. And they find her behind the wheel with the engine running, sleeping, and they go, oh, you were operating while visibly impaired. And because of your previous one, you weren't supposed to be anywhere near a car, most likely. But that would be like a double whammy. But there was no evidence that she moved the car. An appeals court previously overturned her conviction, holding there must be evidence that she moved the vehicle. And there was no such evidence. Ohio law states that no one with an OVI suspension, and here's the quote, shall operate any motor vehicle upon the public roads or highways within this state during the period of the suspension. And so the question is, what does it mean to operate the motor vehicle? What we're talking about right here is specifically what you're allowed to do and not allowed to do during an OVI suspension in Ohio. But a lot of this would parallel the statutes that talk about whether or not you can operate a vehicle while impaired because we're talking about the term operate. Now, many people don't understand this. A statute can contain its own definitions. So if you look at the Motor Vehicle Code in Michigan, MCL 257, the whole section, it will have at the beginning a list of definitions. Here's what an automobile is. Here's what a road is. Here's what this is. Here's what that is. And so if you have a word and you want to know what it means, the first step is to look at the code itself for a definition. If the code contains a definition, you use that one. If the code does not contain a definition, the court then goes through a process and asks several questions such as, is this a legal term of art that didn't need definition because it was a legal term of art? And if it's a legal term of art, like negligence, for instance, well, then you go off the legal definition of negligence that's accepted by the courts. If there is no legal definition, for instance, and it's not defined in the statute, you can then consult a dictionary. And you often do that. So interestingly, they consulted a dictionary, but we'll get there in a second. Uh, One justice writing for the majority said, Ohio law does not directly state whether a driver in this woman's situation should be considered operating the vehicle. So now that justice who wrote the opinion for the four and the majority 
noted that the Oxford English Dictionary, my authorities over here and over there, defines the word operate as to cause or actuate the working of or to work a machine. She continued that the particular function of a motor vehicle is to move and provide transportation on roads. Therefore, in order for a person whose license is suspended for an OVI to be guilty of driving under that suspension, the person must be in more than mere physical control of the vehicle. The person must cause or have caused the movement of the motor vehicle. So sitting in the parked car is not operating it. And I actually like that reasoning. I agree with that. Now, I know there are people who are already arguing with the facts, saying, but Steve, we all know what's possible here. It's possible that someone could be driving along the road and for whatever reason, pull over, put it in park, close their eyes and pretend they're sleeping. Cop comes by and goes, oh, person's sleeping. Well, how'd the car get there? Well, we can speculate all we want about those kinds of things. But remember that to be convicted of something, they actually have to have evidence against you. And the evidence doesn't come from speculation or making up facts. So all we know here is the woman is found behind the wheel asleep. And they don't dispute that. They concede that they believe she was sleeping. So unless she was sleep driving, which I suppose is possible, but again, that's not in the facts here. So did she cause the vehicle to move? And they say there's no evidence that she did. Therefore, she's not operating the motor vehicle. Past Ohio Supreme Court rulings found defendants guilty of operating a vehicle while intoxicated under various scenarios. In one, a man was found guilty of an OVI after he was found passed out in a parked car with his foot on the accelerator. In another case, a defendant was convicted of an OVI for sleeping while drunk in the driver's seat with the keys in the ignition but with the engine off. Now that's an odd one because here the woman was in the parked car with the engine running. So presumably the keys are in the ignition or the equivalent thereof if it's one of the modern cars that has a push button and the keys need to be nearby. But the point is that this appears to conflict at least with the second one of those examples. But here the court said if the definition of operate were to include merely sitting in the driver's seat while possession of a key, then a child who listens to music while sitting in the driver's seat of a car parked on a public road while the key is in the ignition is guilty of operating a motor vehicle without a valid license. And nobody would ever push that argument. She added it could also make it illegal for a person with an OVI suspension to temporarily take shelter in a car during bad weather. She wrote that her conclusion was consistent with an Ohio law from 2002 passed after those two earlier court rulings that defines operate as to cause or have caused movement of a vehicle. And apparently that law is not the same as this law. That's why they had to go and find the definition in the dictionary, just in case. Meanwhile, her opinion is joined by uh, a couple other justices, but there is also a separate concurring opinion where a judge wrote that regarding the law at issue in the case, the General Assembly enacted only one definition of operate, and that definition requires movement of the vehicle. So he appears to agree, but he wrote a concurring opinion. And he said that he did that because he wouldn't go as far as to say the definition of the term operate in the 2002 law applies to all statutes that employ the term without defining it. And, and he's right. But that's the point, is that if you can't find a definition in that statute, but you can find one in another statute, you can kind of look at it for some kind of guidance, but it's not definitive. It's kind of like when you can find a case from another state uh, in your state. It, it might not be you know, definitive either, but they can look at it and go, well, let, let's see what that's all about. So um, there was a dissent where a judge wrote that operating a vehicle need not require movement. He cited his own dictionary definitions and noted that the Ohio legislature's decision to criminalize the operation of a vehicle while under an OVI suspension, not simply the driving of a vehicle, strongly suggests that operation does not require movement. Uh, he added, the lead opinion's interpretation of the statute flies in the face of plain meaning. It is contrary to the attention of the legislature as demonstrated by its enactments, and it defies principles of stereotysis, that is the idea of precedence taking over. So what does the lead opinion offer in support of its reading? Precious little. 
So the man who dissented is apparently very upset by this. At least he appears to be in his, in his opinion. But keep in mind, it's a very, very narrow ruling here. And it only applies, even in Ohio, to people who are already under an OVI suspension who are told you cannot operate a vehicle while you're on this suspension. So it doesn't apply just to generally people who are out there drinking and then getting in cars. But it reminded me of all those wacky examples that people used to tell me. And the funny thing is that sometimes there is case law in some states that say things like that. You know, like let's suppose that you are drinking hard and you decide you're not going to drive. You're going to be safe. So you get in your car, fire the car up, and you're sitting in the seat and you're not going anywhere. That's just one thing. However, let's suppose you fire the car up just to get the heater turned on and you're laying down across the front bench seat of the car. Is that the same thing or is that different? What if you climb in the back seat, but you're not in the front seat? Engine's running to keep the car warm. I'm not saying it's a safe thing to do, but let's just say that's what you do and a cop walks up. And so there's all these different variations on it. And I have heard of examples where people said, Steve, I found a case that shows this and it happened in you know Utah or Nevada or whatever. And so what's funny is I've met people who say, well, Steve, the law says this. And I always say, well, show me in the Motor Vehicle Code where it says that. Because they don't have a list of exceptions that say, by the way, you are not allowed to operate a motor vehicle. However, if you need to, sleep one off. If you put the keys in the glove box, you're good to go. There's nothing in the law books that says that. If that existed, it would be a case law opinion like this where a court has ruled and said, with this set of facts applied to this law, here's the conclusion we reach. So as of right now in Ohio, if you are under an OVI suspension and you get into a car, you're not violating the suspension rules as long as you don't cause the car to move. That's the distinction here. So it's an interesting case. Dave, Ed, and Lawrence all sent it. Lawrence sent it to me just minutes ago. Literally, I just checked my email one last time and Lawrence sent it over and said, dude, <laughs> you got in just under the wire. So from cleveland.com, Ohio Supreme Court motorists don't violate the OVI suspension unless the vehicle is moving. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. I've never faked a sarcasm.